think how cool it's going to be when you're able to say, we're sitting here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we want to go to Yosemite. And we want to go, you know, in a month or two and be able to drop that pen in Yosemite, know your destination there, and then be able to trip plan the entire process based on how far you want to travel and be able to click that in one button and have an entire trip plan for you. Uh, we think that's an absolute game changer. I'd like to thank our title sponsor, B1 Bank. B1 Bank knows that entrepreneurs like you are always thinking one step ahead. So you need banking solutions that can keep up. It begins with lending. Does your business need working capital or financing for new equipment? How about a real estate or a construction loan? Good news, the B1 Lending Team is ready to learn your goals and help you find the best lending option available. Now let's talk about uncomplicating your daily cash flow. B1 offers a full array of treasury management services that let you collect funds faster, pay funds more efficiently, and access your information with powerful online tools. Most importantly, B1 understands the value of working with local nonprofits to build a stronger community. They believe in giving back through hands-on involvement with their B1 community outreach program because it's simply the right thing to do. B1 Bank. Be uncomplicated. To learn more, visit B1Bank.com. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Hello, I'm Andrew McClendon, your host of the Next Entrepreneur Podcast. We're recording from the Propel Productions Podcast Studio here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we welcome our guest, Mr. Terry Broussard, CEO, and Sam Bruner, COO of Spot Tonight. Gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So you guys have created an app-based business. Uh, so why don't we start by you describing to us what it is and what it does. Sure. Be glad to. So Spot Tonight is really the only app out there right now that provides immediate visibility of real-time bookable RV spots across multiple park management systems for the traveler. And so how big is that RV market? Huge, huge. Uh, and obviously, as we've all seen of late, that uh, the COVID, post-COVID desire to get out. Originally, the old timers will talk about 2017 as one of the largest years on record. This year, along with next, are, are forecasted to surpass that and uh, in numbers uh, not seen before in the RV industry, just in new unit sales, not to mention bookings. And I think one company just said they were uh, witnessed like a 40% increase in bookings just over the summer from what they had seen on previous record. Yeah, so I'm an RVer and uh, so excited to talk to you guys about your product. And I checked it out and it's very cool. And I got a few stories to uh, tell along the way about <laughs> why I think it's cool. Uh, which I think most RVers have uh, similar type stories. Um, so I, I was curious, like, uh, y your app is out. It's, it's functioning and people are using it now. And so how long a process has that been from the time you started to today? I think it's been a, it's been a, we'll see on the on the timeline about 19 months, but I think it was probably uh, a good 24 months, and I think it's probably quite frankly uh, the uh, <laughs> a family tradition that kind of blossomed into something that is just a, a tremendous pain point for us specifically. Um, so I think it's been okay. We've been in production for 18 months, 19 months. But I think it's been a, a years right, of right, uh, right. true application of, yeah. of ultimately, you know, this doesn't work. Um, and so I think, uh, you know, we, we started to, to voice the opinion of, of what we could and potentially couldn't uh, do. And then voice that with a lot of fellow RVers uh, and said, hey, you know, th there's a pretty good amount of our friends and family that potentially would use this service. So. It certainly can't be a, a failure if our friends are going to use it. That's pretty cool. Um, so we started to bring together the team about 19 months ago. And by no stretch of the imagination, is it just Terry or I? Uh, yeah. Quite a robust team to, to help us get to the point with a lot of uh, specialities uh, in their career to, to obviously get to a point where you have an app in iOS, you have an app in 
and Google Play and obviously the processes and everything that go to that to uh, effectively have someone consume your product. Yeah. So pretty pretty neat and, and certainly an elongated process, but we'll, we'll definitely say about 19 months. Uh, so pretty and quick turnaround. So when you, when you look at that, you have a product that's functioning. Um, and having been through that process, certainly there will be, you know, an unlimited number of upgrades over time as you continue to improve the product. But when you look at what you've learned so far, what is it that you would say you've, you've picked up on that makes app users want to connect with your brand and use it and be loyal customers? What are, what are those things? I, I would say, first off, that it has to work. It has to be fast. And it has to be clean, no hiccups. And we learned that by having some hiccups along the way and a lot of early feedback from beta testers and then from actual live uh, launch. And we had a rapid correction cycle and, a, as Sam said, a great development team that was able to go from a concept to execution and a launch in the App Store and we still wait and like ring the bell every time we get it. it's okay launch for sale you know and and the app's free but uh, that's the verbiage that the app store uses and it's like yeah we're out again and then you can see the issues and the comments on social media dive off reporting errors and then like now i see more likes and shares every day and so that to me you know, Sam's really the numbers guy. I look at that casual feedback and I'm like, wow, you know, I can, I can just feel it. You know, it's catching on. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. And I would say it's been, it was interesting at the early onset as well. I think it, when we were going through our customer discovery process, right, of what people want to consume, right, and how does it have to look, Um you know, I quite often say this to our team. I mean, we're not competing against any other RV app. We're competing against Airbnb. We're com competing against VRBO, the Expedias of the world, the Ubers of the world with the convenience of being able to, in a few clicks, have the service that you expect in the consistency that you expect in the user experience that right. you get from a from a Uber or any other DoorDash or waiter. Um, so these are the people that we're competing against, which I think vitalizes our team to, you know, a, an extent that um, it's not just in a particular sector. We're fighting for volume, um, we're fighting for uh, ultimate headspace for the, that individual uh, to, to utilize our app more than, say, an Uber or, uh, you know, TripAdvisor, whatever it may be. Yeah, so. that, that's fascinating because you're, you're, the, the user experience has been defined by the big guys, right? right. The Ubers and the Airbnbs, and, and those are the apps that a lot of people use and they're familiar with them, and, and your app, I can see, or you would want it to be as user friendly as those are. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, I, you know, I was just thinking back um, that about ten years ago is when I started to notice that entrepreneurs were getting more recognition and were becoming the new rock stars, right? But you could you could see where the software developers and the app developers they were the they were the real rock stars right and if you ask an entrepreneur you know like hey what do you do they would love to be able to say yeah well, you know well i developed this little app right i mean so but that's where you guys are right i mean that's that is who you are today so uh, how is that to to to, to answer that question <laughs> well, I don't. I often don't think of us as rock stars, but I think of us uh, <laughs> as as trying to deliver. We say a rock star product, and I think kind of going back to the the ten year mark, right? Of obviously just the development within technology. You know, you look at the forefront of our economy, not only here within the U.S. but globally. You know, and you look at something to the figure of we'll say three hundred sixty trillion that will actually take place in the app economy. So, you know, from our perspective, it's a tremendous pool. Of, of, of assets, but in, in really consumer oriented products that will develop uh, the US and, and globally um, over the next five, 10 years. And it's, it's interesting to kind of think back um, of just kind of the, the different skill sets to get to the point of, I think, where we're at today. Um, you know, my, my background's always been in finance and accounting and working at several different firms. And what I've kind of often found in, in the mentors that I've had um, is that you can have a great system, process, product, but if you don't have the ability to 
bring that to market and ultimately have a connection, going back to your brand question, with that consumer of delivering that consistent uh, offering, then it, it, it will be a challenge. And I think the reason I bring that up is because every single new product, I would, I would beg to differ, that is going to have to have an application. You are going to have to have an application going forward within business to as, as, as still type of a business it may be, um, you know, or, or an archaic business model, whatever um, you're delivering, it's going to have to be in the palm of someone's hand. And I think that obviously excites us and entrepreneurs in general of saying software will continue to develop, but you have to have that access point for a consumer uh, to, uh, to have that brand recognition. And of course you want that because the consumers always have their phone in their hands. Right. And um, so that's cool. So, Sam, that was your background. Terry, what, what's your background been in? So, interestingly enough, I think I shared earlier, you know, I come from a medical background. I'm a registered nurse. Uh, I like to tell people we fix things. Uh, my master's degree is in public administration, information systems background, retired Air Force, did a little time in the Pentagon. And we fix problems. And so that's kind of how this all came to be. And Sam and I, just made a perfect match because, you know, I talk to the parks. I'm the four-time RV. I'm on my fourth RV. I am just taken with this whole process when you go into a park and you ask them for their system and they show you a clipboard. And you're like, oh, my gosh, you know. And then you go to the other parks and they're a full-spectrum piece, you know, piece of work. And so, so when we came up with the idea, you know, it was like, we've got to bring this together. We got to bring some people up to this level. We got to connect to these others. And, and that's, that's basically it. And I think that, uh, that uh, we just made the magic together. You know, it just really worked out. So father, son-in-law, we hadn't made that connection yet. So how does that, how does that work? Uh, it works out great, uh, you know, millennial and old timer. Uh, so sometimes I just say, sure, whatever you want to do, that's fine. That'll work, uh, you know. And uh, uh, I've been blessed with a, a, a fabulous family uh, that is all in on this. Everybody's in on it. We clearly have some talent amongst us and, and some talent that uh, we, we each had in our network of connections. Right. Um, we spoke earlier, you know, about building the beta test group. Obviously, there's a lot of people in the military that like to travel in RV. So I hear the problems all along. So getting the beta group wasn't that big of an issue for us. Um, getting in the development, and certainly Sam will, will take you down some of that pathway there, was, uh, was his forte. And, and, you know, as, as, uh, and, and that's where it all came together. And, you know, you were talking about entrepreneurs, and I think really that is it. You know, that's the secret right there of everything is you've got to have this teamwork because there's probably a lot of ideas that sat out there and just died on the grease board. I, for one, be honest with you, uh, you know, and I've had some Air Force suggestion awards uh, over my time from creative thought processes and neat ideas, and the Air Force uh, has a program for that. But uh, I had no idea that the entrepreneurial community in Louisiana was so strong and vibrant, and there were so many resources out there to to really help you take that idea and go from zero to hero with that idea. Yeah, cool. Well, I want to talk about that in a minute. I did want to ask you first about, you mentioned you're a four-time RVer. Uh, I'm a two-time RVer, but um, what is it that you love about RVing? Well, I think in our history, in our family history, uh, as Sam t talked to, we were doing brand discovery, and so we had to give family names, and they sent, secret survey, and it came back together, thus the hashtag go together, is that we are a very connected family group, not only just being Louisiana folks, but military. We have friends all over the world, uh, all over the country, and we like to travel. And so early on, we started with our first class C, and we worked our way through a trailer to the big super C, and it's kind of the life cycle of the RV. It's, it's small, big, bigger, biggest, smaller right? As your children go off and then right, right. everybody wants to go bigger again. So um, that was really it. You know, it's just the ability to, to pick up and go and see things that aren't within the confines of a hotel or what the, they want you to see. You yeah. know, I like to go to parks. We like to sit outside. We like to visit. We like to watch football games. We like to cook different things. We like to have 30 people hanging off the side of the RV at a campground to visit. 
And I think yeah. it's, I think it's interesting too, as well. I mean, um, so I didn't grow up RVing, but I grew up camping, tent camping. We couldn't yeah. afford an RV, right? Bigger, bigger, big, small, right? <laughs> um, but we did tent camping, right? And I just kind of remember, you know, it, it, it doesn't go lost on me when we see reservations coming through that I still remember as a kid, uh, smelling the campfire, right? And, yeah. and, and, you know, smoking the more, uh, the s'mores and the hot dogs and waking up in the morning and having some of the dew there as well. And, and obviously marrying it to the family, we've, we've become RVers ourselves, but, um, you know, with some, some accommodations that, that I certainly enjoy. Right. Um, but I, I think it goes back to Terry's, Terry's comment. I think there's, you know, we, it was, it was a benefit and it's kind of weird to say around the pandemic as our focus of our business, but, uh, we always started this as, you know, it is a family activity. Um, and, and it's kind of changed over time where, you know, when we look back at some of our fondest vacations and memories, it's literally sitting in a campground, yeah. uh, with people that yes are sort of our family, but the the yeah. RV are next door and the people yeah. across the lot yeah. and you know the people that are from Louisiana and they just came from Texas you know wherever it may be and it's right. just a really interesting eclectic group of people that is just so fun yeah. um, and I think everyone shares that common bond that network where you you start to find out these different um, you know groups. Um, and I kind of call them focus groups, but whether it's a vintage or model of your individual RV or just state of Louisiana. Um, and people are so tight knit. It's incredible, yeah. uh, you know, to be part of that community and deliver, you know, that experience for folks. Yeah. I love it. I mean, it's, it, it's really a blast and you, you know, I always feel like you can have your own little condo wherever you're going, you know, and it could be at Disney at Wilderness Park or a, a f- college football game or national park, state parks. Uh, we did a lot of baseball, college world mm-hmm. series and, um, you can bring all your stuff, your bikes, and if you're in parks, you can bring kayaks, and and you got all your gear, and you know it's it's a blast. And I, th- I I feel like the common kind of misconception is that you got to take all your stuff, right? Yeah. Um, but it's after the first time you've got all your stuff, right? And and half the stuff that you were going to bring anyway, you're going to bring in the suitcase uh, on the airplane, right? Yeah, it's going to be yeah. more of a challenge doing that in the first place right. uh, to where you, you basically have it already in the RV where people are comfortable and excited and, you know, have kind of a home base to come back to. Yeah. I don't know how many people are excited even when they uh, go to a hotel or a resort, how much time you actually spend in the room, right? It's yeah. a bed. It's yeah. more about the experience that you have, um, you know, and, and I think obviously being close with your family there as well, I think, uh, you know, changes the changes the scenario. So tell us how you, the story about how you guys got started. Oh, sure. So uh, literally Sam and I were standing on the side of the RV in Lafayette on a Friday evening, and Sam says, let's go camping. I said, okay, when? He says, tonight. I said, tonight? He says, yeah. I said, okay, look, the RV's fuel. I keep clean clothes in there. The refrigerator's cool. Let me just unplug it. While I unplug it, here's my phone, and there's five pages of apps to find a spot. You go ahead and start looking and find me a spot for tonight in South Louisiana in the fall season, and I'll be ready to go. I'll take you wherever you want to go. <laughs> and that's, as he's like, you got to be kidding. And that was the genesis for Spot Tonight is how do we come past that friction point so we can make this easier for us to go places. Because ultimately it led us to not being able to go RVing, <laughs> right. right? I mean, that was the, right. that was the genesis yeah. of it, of, of, you know, experiencing for the next hour or two, trying to find something that would fit, you know, Terry's RV, 34 foot, Jayco, Seneca, TVs everywhere, SEC style country, uh, you know, RV. So it's not just pull up and, and find a, a spot to boondock or whatever it may be. You know, there have to be actual functions behind that and, and, and ultimately how we RV. Um, so literally you sitting want, in the You want all your hookups. You want your yeah, 50 absolutely. amp power and your... I have three daughters. Look, you got to have water. Yeah. I'm telling you, you got to have healthy water. You know, it's just power, air conditioning, right? You got to have AC. Yeah. yeah you don't our want... our camping style. Yeah. You don't want to uh, be managing your tanks, your fresh water, your gray tanks based on your daughter's shower. Because <laughs> right. they're going to fill up fast. Absolutely. <laughs> I've been there. But... Uh, Okay, so that's what sparked a a, a hole in the market, uh, a, a need. So what what did that look like? You know, to taking it to the idea of hey, we need our own app. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I think when we 
when we first started kind of the discovery process, if you will, of just evaluating the, 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 the industry as a whole, right? I mean, uh, Terry and I have just been in, you know, consumers of, of RVs, right? And enjoying the experience, but have no stretch of the imagination of how it functions, the different sectors, uh, different companies that are present in there. And then, and then furthermore, just the applications that are already out there. Um, and it was for us, we probably spent a, a, a solid, you know, four or five weeks questioning ourselves that there isn't something that's already out there yeah, yeah. Uh, because there had to be right from my perspective yeah, there yeah. just had to be we're right. missing something right um and so you know sitting there saying it, it can't be this hard right it cannot be this hard and so um you know, I think from our, our process, we did a lot of questioning early on that we're missing something, that we're not delivering a, 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 a certain experience, um, or that somebody already else is, is doing such. So it was, it was an interesting process in that first 30 days to figure out, okay, where would spot tonight or where would an app like this fit within that ecosystem of saying, okay, how do we, how do we deliver that? And good Lord. I mean, we, we know the different business model iterations of where we started to deliver what we wanted. Well, I, I mean, ultimately pretty quickly though, you have to get to a point where you say, okay, this is an idea, but does it pay? Who's going to pay for it? How are you going to make money doing it? And it takes a while to figure that out and you want to limit the amount of money that you spend in trying to figure that out. So how clear was that pathway to potential profitability? How clear did that get for you guys before you said, okay, let's, let's start digging in. Yeah. I I think what's interesting is, um, you know, you talk about kind of in the the earlier questions that, uh, you know, who we're competing against, right? Uber's got billions of dollars to pour into their application and UX and UI and different programs that they can entice consumers to consume their product and keep them in the application. I feel like every time I go to Uber, it's different, uh, different services, right? Now they're going to Walgreens or CVS and and delivering those goods. And so when we think about, you know, a, a finite amount of resources to build something that functions, I think that's where a lot of people don't necessarily understand that we're trying trying to compete against those big brands at maybe half a percent of, of an overall budget on a quarterly basis, not even a year basis. Gotcha. Um, and I think um, when we were going through and looking at all the you know potential solutions as it relates to what we wanted to deliver, the real-time booking uh, ability, right, 100% match on your individual spot, is looking at the previous business models. And I think we learned a lot from that. Um, and, and quite frankly, uh, you know, it, there is luck in all of this as well. And I think there's a couple of things from a timing perspective. Uh, one is is the, the, the previous business models um, have always relied on building their own inventory. And what I mean by that is having the underlying operating system to um, – you know, manage a campground and ultimately have a lot of campgrounds oh, wow. that utilize yeah. that. Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, th- that has been the individualized kind of stove piped business model that has, uh, I would say not necessarily failed, but perhaps a few of those have started as what spot tonight would be, um, of trying to be the OTA or just the, the Switzerland, as we often referred to it as, you know, these are all of our partners, our technology partners that allow us to, to serve up that availability. So you're talking about like the park management systems. Correct. Okay. So there's, how many RV parks are there in the country? Any clue? <laughs> there is a there is a, a bullseye that continues to move every yeah. single day. Yeah. Uh, but we'll say on the private side, there's roughly about 6,000 private campgrounds across uh, specifically the United States. Yeah. Um, you know, you put on top of that, uh, you know, national parks, there's roughly 400 or so. Um, and then who knows how many additional there are from a from an yeah. uh, so, individual state, private level, they continue to, to pull up. I know yeah. here in... Louisiana, we've got a pretty good contingency of state parks as so, well. So these parks, some some more than others, would have a park management system that would uh, allow for some type of online reservation or at least a management as the calls come in. Correct. Right. And so those systems exist in parks or not. Some are not going to have that. And they're going to be on, the, on paper. the paper and the clipboard that mm-hmm. you talked about. Um, and, um, but your product, your app interfaces with those park management systems and complements them and then does all these things that I'd like to talk about that, that bring this user friendly experience. Why don't we, uh, 
take a break right now, get in a word from our sponsor, and we'll pick that up on the other side. We would like to thank MBD Automation for their support of the Next Entrepreneur podcast. MBD Automation is a mechanical install contractor with a program-centric focus. So what do these guys do? They install conveyor systems, VRCs, platforms, singulators, sorters, and all sorts of other types of automated equipment. Who do they work for? They work for systems integrators, manufacturers, and end users, in fulfillment centers, airports, mail processing facilities, and projects in the defense industry. MBD Automation works for numerous Fortune 500 companies across the United States and has a list of international clients that they perform work for in the U.S. as well. If MBD Automation can help you on your next project, you can find them online at mbdautomation.com. And we are back with Sam Bruner and Terry Broussard with Spot Tonight. Uh, So we're talking about how your product, your app interfaces with the existing park management systems. It's a complementary system. So I was just thinking, Terry, if you could uh, walk us through uh, how your app works and what it does. I'd be glad to. So Spot Tonight is basically a front-end application to a series of separate databases that sit on the back-end servers, right? Straight up, that's what it is. We provide a remote terminal literally into the palm of your hand that accesses competing reservation systems that easy. So as you saw, I just launched it out. I have already built out my travel profile. We're going to ask the travelers who they are, what type of vehicle, what their park and spot preferences are, how they pay for things, any membership and discounts. RVers love memberships and discounts. And then accept notifications. So now my device knows what I need. It's a little bit different in the RV world from hotel industry because not only do you ask for a king bed in the hotel world, but in the RV bed we're gonna world, we're gonna ask for a big spot. We need to know 30 or 50 amp water, sewer, Wi-Fi, cable. Some of us like fire rings, picnic tables, oh, and zip lines and water parks. So we have all of that loaded in there. We get the whole vehicle profile, so we collect all that information because it takes that to have a match. Again, I told you the park and spot preferences. I keep mine generally wide open. And then So by keeping it wide open then you open yourself up to all the possibilities. That's correct. But I you, go, you may want a boat ramp or Correct. You know. And in the in the search cycle, right before you do the final search, you can add that. Yeah. So if suddenly this weekend you're bringing the boat, you can add boat ramp. Right. And so then it, it changes the focus. That's fascinating. So then we go back through, I talked about memberships and discounts. So normally in the booking process, when you walk into a campground, you'll present, well, I have a membership for Good Sam or uh, FMCA or I'm retired military. And they'll say, okay, give me that card because that gives you the biggest discount. So from a programming standpoint, we did the same thing. We collect those membership cards. And our logic, if the club, if the campground offers a discount, through a club, and it shakes hands with that one, then you get that discount. So it's not really Terry and Sam's discount. It's just we're the conduit. Right. So let's go to a search. Let's assume all that's set. Here we go right here in the app. We do have uh, featured parks that appear in the tray in any one of these parks. Uh, You can go and learn out more information. Uh, Let's go search available parks. We call the app Spot Tonight because really that was the genesis of the idea but we can go as far forward in the booking system that they let. So if you want to book for the Christmas lights in Natchitoches at Grand Decor up there, you can do it in the app right now. Right. And so it immediately set for tonight. You can change those dates. You're going to tell us how many guests. And here's some, here's like, for instance, there's Grand Decor that pops right up. You can touch on the pictures, flip through park pictures, all of that information. You pick your spot based off of the park map. That's correct. It'll take you, give you driving directions. It'll give you the opportunity to do Apple or Google Maps. It tells you about it. You can read more about the park, spot amenities, park facilities, details, rules, cancellation policy. Right now, I can tell that it are, it has a spot for me tonight because I've got green light. It's a go. Wow. I can hit that button, touches the database, and basically all of these spots are bookable at that park right now. 
in Natchitoches. I can hit the spot if that's the one I want. Hit continue, tells me all about it, gives me the booking, and I have a clock ticking because there are people looking for that same spot, right? Right. So I have a countdown timer, and once we punch that button, it's booked. So One of the other features I, I spoke of earlier was the share button. So as you know that uh, travelers, we go together, right, generally. Right. So um, in this particular feature, I can punch that button and jump right into a messaging sequence that will send that exact park out to the travelers. So you could share it with all your friends and family and say, hey, it looks like Grand decor has got spots up there. Let's all go up there. And boom, everybody pulls out the app and books it. Typically, in a husband-wife relationship, it's the female traveler that does all of the bookings, about 64%. So that's who the audience that really congregated around when we do pitches on this. It's really is the navigator. The other guys just drive the bus. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, when you look at all the offerings there, um, what are the things that you perceive your customers value the most as it relates to that, you know, we're talking about how the apps, you know, have to be user friendly. And when, when you showed that share button, it just strikes me like, okay, now this is getting to a level where it's really user friendly and, and is in, uh, inviting uh, more people to engage sure. with it. I think um, when I look at that and what, what are they looking for, it really depends on what they're camping for, right? If you're on a vacation and you can flex a couple of days and just relax and get off the grid, then you you kind of open up where, you, where you're going to go camping and what you're looking for. If you want to be on a river, if you want to be near the beach. I mean, we have parks, as I talked about, coast to coast. Uh, I can literally put you sitting on the Colorado River in Arizona. I can put you on the Llanos River in Texas. I can put you on the Red River in North Louisiana. It just depends on what you're hunting for. If you're mission camping, where you have a set place you have to be, then that changes where you're going, and maybe you're not doing destination camping. And we're clustering some of those now by destination to fill out, uh, you know, our growth chart and and the different patterns of where we go to. Any other um, parts of that? But I didn't mean to cut you off there. Anything else that you needed to cover with that? I can just show you that, though, in the tray, basically what we have here, uh, uh, the ability to save a favorite park. And so when you save a favorite park, uh, it will save those up there and basically becomes a place that maybe you want to go. And then your past reservations kind of becomes your travel log so you can see where we're going with this. So when someone says, yeah, where did y'all go that, that, that was on the Colorado River? And you guys were like parked. It was like overhanging the river. Um, and, and it's all right there. And we also have an inbox feature that uh, will be tied. We actually geolocate every spot in a park. So we have the ability to do some rather unique marketing as well as information, whether it's supplying you with an RV technician. As soon as you arrive through the gate, you can see an advertisement from a particular service that you may or may not need. Again, linked to the size of the bus. Uh, obviously, if you don't have a diesel bus, you may not need to know that Terry's Diesel Service is right down the road. Uh, but if you have an air conditioner problem, you're going to want to know about a service technician pretty quick. And, of course, as luck would have it, you can do contactless check-in. So that as we approach a gate, it can actually send a gate code and directions to the exact spot that you're assigned. That is fantastic. I mean, that is really fantastic. So um, experience recently uh, went to... Flagstaff, Arizona, like last two weeks, to climb uh, the highest point there, Mount Humphrey. Uh, tried to book an RV spot a few months in advance, but the park management system, online software, wouldn't book out that far. So I had to remember to wait to call, and by the time I did, it was probably a little <laughs> too late. Um, and I Googled, you know, RV parks near Mount Humphrey. And I uh, called someone. And I, I talked to a person, and I got a, a spot booked. I didn't know, I didn't know where it was in the park. It was a spot, period. And um, turns out, I booked. Uh, there's more than one Mount Humphrey in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> this one was in California. I didn't pick up on the area code. I paid for it. I get a receipt, an email receipt. So, you know, talking about, you know, in California, you know, you can't run your generators at this time or that time. And I'm like, I'm going to 
Arizona. <laughs> so uh, I called, the, I quickly figured out, called the lady back and said, oops, let's undo that deal. <laughs> um, and there's plenty of stories like that. I mean, it's it's so, it, it, it's inviting and interesting, you know, to for you to share that experience because that that's not, uh, our viewers are incredibly resourceful. I mean, you talk about, right, trying to find that individual spot, that experience that you wanted, right? And, and you know, by the end of the day, you've got six Google browsers opened up looking for Mount Humphrey and you click the third browser and it's in California versus right. Arizona. And that's a consistency, yeah. uh, you know, of, of, uh, of the problem that we look to solve, right, with, yeah. with Spot Tonight to make it, you know, that level of fidelity where you do not have to spend hours upon hours trying to have a great experience, right? If we can deliver yeah. that, that experience in, in one minute or less, right, that's a success, you know, for Terry and I and the broader team at Spot Tonight. Yeah, another part of that story is when I when I'd first started that search a couple of months before uh, the event, I... I also called and left messages in which I didn't get a return call because you had to talk to somebody. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it was so far out. They, I guess there was no reason for them to call me. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> a lot of reasons why uh, I like that. Another story. This was uh, from my first RV. So this would have been 20 years ago. Um, a buddy and I are going to an away LSU football game. We're going to Tennessee. We drive up that Friday. We pull into in, into uh, where is that Louisville, mm -hmm. and uh, we we pull in to the campus. And the campus is wide open. There are no RVs there. They must not not allow that like LSU uh, does. And so we pull into a parking lot and thinking it's kind of a first come first serve. No signs. No, I mean it's Saturday, and so we 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 park. We got there late, and we, you know, put our RV up on jacks, and we go to sleep. And in the middle of the night, I hear this train coming, and uh, it is blowing its horn. And, I mean, I just bolted out of bed, looked out my window, and I see the headlight of the train, and it looks like it is coming straight through my bedroom <laughs> in the RV. And I'm like, oh, my God, we backed up to a railroad track. Well, we're on jacks. I wasn't going to be able to get the RV off of the jacks and get down. I just ran out of the RV, ran to the back. I could see that it was a bit of an optical illusion. I was, I was, the RV was about 10 feet from the tracks. But, man, it looked like it was coming right through Close. the middle of that thing. And the, and the sound of that horn, I mean, <laughs> it was absolutely terrifying. Woke so, you up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> had contemplating a little bit where your spot was. <laughs> so needless to say, the next morning, all of the, you know, the Tennessee RVers come piling in and I'm in somebody's spot. I mean, it was a normal parking lot, but, um, so we had to move. We ended up down the road, parked at a concrete plant. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So, uh, I could have used your app, uh, 20 years ago for sure. <laughs> but, um, so when you look at where you're at today with the functionality of your app, um, you must, you know, have this, uh, you know, this maybe balance of the excitement of what you're able to put out there today versus the excitement of what you know is the potential and what's next, right? Because I can imagine that, that app is just going to keep offering more and more content and value uh, to the users. So, how do y'all, how do y'all process that? Yeah, absolutely. I think Terry probably gets mad at me because I say it at Ignazium. We got to get RV spots right, right? And I, I constantly go back to our core mission of saying, okay, we have to provide the level of fidelity to make sure that it is a 100% match, right? In my mind, the worst experience that we could possibly deliver is someone show up in an RV park and they don't have the amenities or the individual spot that they're expecting, right? And so when we think about the anticipation of what we're able to deliver right now, I would say even admittedly, our core function is to just show what the experience will be over the next six months, right? So, you know, earlier this week, we found out, you know, that we were solidifying a connection that will actually bring us to roughly about 70,000 individual bookable spots across the United States. And so our 
core function right now has just been able to show what it will be, right? The expectations and the excitement of, of how easy this could be. And we've had tremendous support from the RV community, both on a campground level and travelers, uh, but it has been an iteration of, you know, what we've been able to deliver to date. And, you know, we, we often joke in, in our kind of our agile sprints, I mean, that the Apple will completely different in the next 90 days um, and the features that we want to deliver, right? Yeah. We understand that the core core function is spots, but we want to be able to take it to the next level and, and ultimately say, you know, um, we maybe want to go park next to a train track because, uh, because we're, we're train enthusiasts. Right. And so be able to, we do have to, one of those. In the <laughs> we do, we do. I'm going to bring it up, but, um, ultimately be able to have a, have a trip planned for yourself. I mean, think how cool it's going to be when you're able to say, we're sitting here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we want to go to Yosemite and we want to go, you know, in a month or two, and be able to drop that pen in Yosemite, know your destination there, and then be able to trip plan the entire process based on how far you want to travel and be able to click that in one button and have an entire trip plan for you. Uh, we think that's an absolute game changer. Mm -hmm. And the only way we're able to do that is to be able to work with the underlying park management systems right. that I just don't want to see what you have available at Yosemite, right? I want to see all the parks that are available at Yosemite, right? Not just that a particular park system has three there. I want to see right. all 25 right. of them, right? And so ultimately, I think that's, you know, the, the excitement that we see, right, that we're putting together that a lot of our, our supporters and our ambassadors uh, have, have really seen the vision, um, you know, the, but it is, it is, it's tough to contain the, the excitement. Yeah, I, right? I, 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 <laughs> I know I would, we, I know I would. Try and that. I'd say we want to see those parks if they have a spot. So remember in the beginning of the app, when I talked about, we build out your profile. And for those of you that have, of the, of the listeners that have looked for a RV park near me and hunt and dig in each one of those stove pipes, that game is changing. Because now we're only going to serve up those park spots that meet your need. If you want to be near a train track to watch trains, we can arrange that. Yeah. But if you want that idyllic water view, we actually have that as a qualifier. Water's front, we have that as a qualifier. Or you need a horse pen for your, your traveling one, one of those horse trailers that has sleeping compartments. We have a park that has that as a qualifier. Wow. Or if you want bocce ball, you know, we have all those filters. That's or 55-plus community. Or pickleball. That. Pickleball, we <laughs> pickleball have that. So there are, people, there are people that want that. And so you don't have to spend that time literally digging through all of that to get to that feature. So picture us driving down the road in the bus, and maybe we have our destination picked, but we want a spot now. Literally, the app has everything stored. I can hand it to my navigator or to my wife and say, whatever comes up will work. I don't have to reload all of those power requirements, water, whatever. If that shows that I have a spot, it is going to take this bus. Fantastic. Love that. So, I, you know, I was thinking about how you start that. I'm like, um, so if you put an app out there, it's going to function. It's got to, and it's got to function to the point that people want to use it. And, um, and so in order to do that, it has to be right, as you keep saying. And, and, and in order for it to be right, you have to spend the capital to get it there. Your investment, I imagine your largest investment is your personnel. And, you know, that's interesting to me because, like, in my business, when I started 32 years ago, I had zero capital uh, in construction, so I had to start small. And I could... Uh, start small and continually build up until I built some capital and then uh, build up to where I was, you know, building buildings, et cetera. So um, how do you fund that investment to build the product to the point that you can put it out into the market? What, what approach did y'all take with that? Gosh, I think we, I mean, at the forefront here, we've been incredibly fortunate with the folks that have, have seen what we uh, envisioned, right? And I think uh, in, in taking kind of that leap of faith of what spot tonight could be, you know, for a broad opportunity set of, of RV travelers. I think I kind of go back to, you know, the different mentors that I've had uh, throughout my career and my life. And I, and I kind of go back to kind of a similar story of, of, of what you just shared, Andrew, is, um, you know, we, we, we had a very finite uh, amount of capital, but yet we needed to make sure that it was delivering an experience that people expected, right? That would at least hang on uh, to see what these guys could be doing. And 
you know, I, I go back to one of my mentors who runs Southern Furniture Leasing out of Tallahassee, Florida, a really successful furniture company. And he was actually an initial investor in Spot Tonight that kind of gave us uh, a, a little bit of that fortitude to say, hey, you know, we could probably do this, right? And we can make this really, really unique. But I go back to what he often shares is that he didn't have any capital to start, right? And, and it was his father that provided him just a little bit sure. of money to you know, start that business to start Southern Furniture leasing that it was a friction point for them to deliver. So uh, we've been very fortunate of having a lot of individual folks believe in the product and then in turn, uh, making sure that we, we deliver on on those milestones and, and what we are looking to build here. Uh, I mean, we've done a really successful job in doing that. And I would go uh, certainly uh, a shout out to the idea of village uh, based in, in New Orleans, a tremendous accelerator program that, uh, you know, talk about failures. We actually didn't get in the first time um, and kind of went back to the well uh, again to see if, uh, if we could refine it a bit more and, and deliver truly what spot tonight was. Uh, but John Atkinson, Brenna Kane and their entire team, uh, it, it, do a tremendous job of exposing Louisiana companies. And I think it's a, a true mission that is, uh, is exciting is, is you often look at technology startup companies and very few are coming from Louisiana or are funded from Louisiana. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's something that we put on our shoulder of saying it's something that we're incredibly proud of that we want to build a technology, be a tech firm here in New Orleans um, you know, where it perhaps might be a little bit easier in some of the markets, but I think the people uh, that have supported us along the way certainly deserve that. And we feel that uh, in what we're, what we're delivering. So the, and, and I, I would say, you know, we came, we're not of the hotel community, right? Or the RV business per se. People walked up to us like, what well, did you work at XYZ before? No, we're, we're totally, new eyes, fresh eyes, trying to solve the problem that we live every day. And so to have that degree of confidence that Sam spoke about for people to invest in us is extremely humbling and uh, at the same time burdensome, you know, because we feel, I mean, we are under a lot of pressure to deliver and um, every day we get better, right? That's my, that's my motto. You know, every day we get better, closer to the goal, and through persistence, principle of air power, through persistence, we will overcome all of these obstacles. And that's the way it works. And it works extremely well. And as you talked about, we're not on a glide slope climb. We are facing an exponential growth that is classified at this time, I would say, you know, <laughs> as an Air Force guy. Uh, it, is, it is exciting. It is like knowing what is in the box under, under a Christmas tree that you're giving to your children. So your your support came in two ways: uh, mentors, friends, family, uh, investment uh, in your business initially, but also the incubator type support, which is all sorts of business advice. Tell us tell us a thumbnail uh, sketch of what the uh, an incubator brings to a company like yours? Oh, sure. I, I think it's, uh, to do it justice in 30 seconds would be challenging. But um, one, it's just the, the network uh, of, of comrades um, at yeah. the end of the day. I mean, you've had a lot of folks, a lot of cohorts, meaning individuals that have gone through the program that, uh, you know, at first you feel like you're on an island as an entrepreneur. I think every entrepreneur has felt that as I'm kind of going at this alone. And, and you do have to, to some extent, have to do that. But then when you're involved in a community or an organization such as Idea Village or an incubator, it allows you to, one, freely share your ideas and freely share the challenges. And it's so interesting because while we might be trying to put RVs in a spot, right, something borrowed bloom in, in Louisiana is, um, is, is providing flowers, right, for for, for weddings and in but yet we still have the same problem we may not vocalize it the exact same way and i would say that's ultimately what an accelerator and incubator program provides is really just a sounding board of other entrepreneurs that are facing the exact same challenges right. they may just look a little bit different right. to where it gives you the confidence that um you know these are all problems that people experience and, and potential pathways to solve that problem yeah um, so that I would say that that's ultimately at the core of, of what it is, is, is creating an environment where there's free share of information um, and in overcoming challenges as, as a cohort or group uh, has been tremendous, you know, for our 
our success, I would say just early on here um, of being able to tap into a lot of those other wonderful entrepreneurs that are solving problems all over the world. Yeah, very cool. And Idea Village is doing a fantastic yeah. job. You know, I, I had, uh, when he mentioned something, Barbara, I, you know, I was telling that team hamper, I said, how cool would that be if I was out touring the local area and I left my hamper at the RV spot and I came back and all our dirty camp clothes were clean. That's another, said, you that's do. another service another that you're startup, talking about. And right? you, you mentioned uh, uh, something borrowed. Mm -hmm. So we're speaking with both of those entrepreneurs. So our listeners will be able to get oh, their awesome. stories oh, at some time in the near future. Uh, but why don't we uh, take a quick pause right now, get an award from our sponsor and we'll be right back. We would like to thank Modus for their support of the Next Entrepreneur Podcast. Who is Modus? Modus is a facility services company that works in the e-commerce fulfillment industry across the United States. What do they do? They like to say they take it from the conveyor to the dock door. Well, what does that mean? It means that they're building the pick stations with the cable management. They're installing guardrails and bollards. They're putting down floor marking. They're putting up aerial signage. These guys build fencing systems, shelving systems, and racking systems. They also do rack recovery for when there's rack failures. They also install dock levelers and dock doors. Modus also installs ASRS systems, which is automated storage and retrieval systems, as well as other robotics projects. They've worked for the largest e-commerce retailers in the world, and they can work for you. If you need to find Modus, you can reach them online at modusmoves.com. And we are back with Sam Bruner and Terry Broussard with Spot Tonight, and I wanted to start talking about marketing uh, and how you guys market. You, you're an app, so you have to market to users, but you have to market to the parks and uh, park management systems. So walk us through marketing to those groups. Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, so my side is primarily to the parks, right? That's really where um, we spend an inordinate amount of time trying to connect them for free, right? There is no charge to the parks for uh, connecting up with us. We provide free inventory. We build the park out in the app. We aggregate all that information in painstaking detail to the actual spots in the map, and we do that for free for the parks. So there are several different venues that we travel in associations, association of RV campground uh, owners and different groups, as well as marketing to those particular groups. We have been very successful and are very, um, uh, I guess, humbled by the, the trust that some of the large resort groups have put into us. We have a collection of... Um, properties that represent probably some 15 different uh, large uh, campground owner, um, you know, firms that have properties all across America. And those that have an advertising team recognize the value of putting their product right in front of the traveler in a handheld app. And so for those, it's really nice when they say, yeah, oh, we have 20 properties. Uh, and oh, by the way, we're buying more, so if I don't get right back to you, just give me a break because, you know, we, we've got so many under, you know, there's a gold rush in the right. RV world, as we talked about, that's why we're here, but also in the RV properties and campgrounds and buying and acquiring and many of the uh, family-owned campgrounds are viewing this as a time, okay, it's time for us to get out, here we're selling it, and so we market all of those across the board to build that group of that. And then, of course, the other the other side are the park management systems. Uh, Sam, that's really where Sam excels uh, in the group there, bringing those deals to it uh, and, and all of that and getting us the fabric to bring this together in the app. Yeah, and it's it's been an interesting process, right? Because we're really playing in three different fields, right? And there are three different people that have three different incentives, right? And so it's ultimately trying to figure out what those are incentives for us to, you know, market, right? And I think it's really special that that Terry obviously re leads up our, our campground communications because, quite frankly, it, it is a it's a one to one relationship with that individual campground. So the three are the parks, mm -hmm. the park management systems, and then the RVers. Correct. That's you bring them. That's okay. So you mentioned that the parks aren't paying a fee tier. So how is, how does spot tonight make money? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we charge a small convenience fee and I feel, and, and this is on a two to $3 basis per transaction. And I, I kind of go back to one of my earlier comments around just kind of pure luck and what, what people have become accustomed to. Right. 
And, uh, you know, people are accustomed to, you know, Uber delivering, you know, your pizza the night before, right? Or, or the, the Mexican restaurant that is, is delivered at two, three dollars, right? And so what we've, what we've found through kind of uh, different iterations is that people are willing to pay for that convenience, are willing to pay for that one minute booking process versus 30, 40 minutes, perhaps even longer, uh, you know, ultimately. So, and, and that's, that was a cognizant business decision to use a conveniency fee for travelers. Cause again, we, we sit on the traveler side. We don't necessarily like to pay fees. We hope to get to a model that we do not have to charge fees, but uh, a little bit of additional background. My family and my mom actually ran a really successful bed and breakfast and, but it was a smaller bed and breakfast out of Tallahassee, Florida. And uh, uh, we had it pre-COVID, couldn't necessarily make it through COVID, but um, we could never put those rooms on Booking.com or Expedia uh, because those business models charge 15 to 35% of the individual rate. And if you can imagine a bed and breakfast that has 10 rooms and you're charging, you know, 150 yeah. to 200 bucks, depending on, you know, what's going, taking place in, in the great town of Tallahassee, right. um, you know, you, you can't support that, right? right? And so we carried that over into our business model is, is that we, quite frankly, we don't believe, uh, you know, that the campground should have to pay for that and nor could support that. And right. so, um, you know, something that, you know, we, we've taken to heart and, and ultimately, you know, hope to move to a model that there is no conveniency fee because we can support it via the marketing, um, you know, efforts that, that, that continues to be a new frontier for us. So the other way that you would make uh, revenue then would be from advertising dollars, right? Or, or what other means are there? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think a couple of different points. I mean, everyone always goes to when you're building an application, you think of the banner, you know, shooting across the top. That is not what we're going to do. I want to make that very clear. Uh, it, it's going to be very strategic, right? Uh, I don't think a whole lot of people like to have banners running across their, their phone or right. uh, push notification, things of that nature that aren't uh, of a specific use. So use case here specifically uh, would be uh, propane, right? Many people need propane uh, in their RVs and many people forget to fill up their propane on their way out of the campground. However, we're, what we're finding is that individual businesses ultimately will pay us to have that level of, uh, you know, uh, fidelity to say, okay, we have camp, we have propane in this particular campground. Right. Campground owner is pretty busy doing everything else, uh, taking the trash out, clocking people in and, right. you know, making sure people are arriving that ultimately we can deliver that as Terry alluded to each individual spot is geolocation based. Again, we know what, uh, RVs, uh, you know, or what RV you're in and if you need propane and to be able to serve that up real time yeah. of saying, Hey, you're checking out of your spot. Have you checked your propane tank? Oh, by the way, so we'll say suburban propane, which is one of the larger propane sure. dealers. Um, is actually present in this park. Go fill up. So uh, there, there's a, a tremendous amount of opportunity, I think, an appetite because everyone kind of pushes back into social digital marketing, where it's, it's a place you can absolutely burn cash very quickly. Yeah, and, and some of that uh, advertising, that, that, you know, digital things that we see, digital noise on, on apps can be a nuisance, but what you're describing is a potential for it to be extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. Like your customers want to know that and 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 that propane seller in, in that instance is, is willing to pay for that click or whatever mm -hmm. so, absolutely but i can see that happening for so many things and supplies and fuel and gas stations you know grocery stores i mean as, as terry alluded to i mean a lot of the booking actually takes place right uh, on that, that, that co-pilot and, uh, you know, that co-pilot wants to know where the nearest grocery store is. Right. I mean, kind of think about right. that of being able to, you know, uh, locate those individual needs and necessities in a thoughtful way, not yeah. just a banner, uh, but something that is, 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 uh, of use, mm -hmm. uh, to our, to our traveler. And we take that, the, you know, take that the heart of saying, okay, what, what is useful? Uh, what are yeah. our travelers saying that is useful? And if it's not, then it's not going to be in spot tonight. A lot of huge opportunity. A lot of tra a lot of RVers are getting away from towing vehicles, uh, so they're renting cars. So if I pull up the app and I see that a rental agency is within so many clicks, click here, we'll come pick you up. They have the spot. They know what they're looking for. They even know how many travelers are in your party <laughs> because you've loaded it in the app. Right. Fantastic. Right? So we have the ability to use technology to provide meaningful services for the traveler, and that's uh, one of the goals. Terry, you talked to uh, in. Uh, one of the breaks about uh, a convention or a trade show that you'd gone to where you're, I think it was seven, eight days long, and, and uh, you're getting your product out there. You're, 
you got sure. a booth you're doing spot tonight tell tell us about how, yeah so how we were went. we were invited to uh, uh present at the um florida rv super show it's one of the largest consumer shows uh it is rows and rows and rows of vendors from pop-up van life campers to the 1.4 million dollar buses and uh, in the vendor booth there's everything from generators to stabilizers to flagpoles and here's old spot tonight uh, from louisiana with our tag team uh pitching it and uh, we literally literally our booth is my tailgating stuff out of the rv folding chairs <laughs> Um, That's Am- perfect. Amazon huh? tablecloth. Wouldn't change it. Wouldn't, Wouldn't change, change it. it. Uh, two TV monitors, uh, some uh, Cajun seasoning that we, that we brought to give away, and just back to back pitches because we didn't have a live. Um, you know, we weren't live in the store, so we were doing demo pitches and just back to back constantly for eight uh, eight days, ten hour days each, and it was just. Uh, like rows and rows of people uh, coming up and then he, and then after the people then eventually this group of travelers came up and she said well, we actually own parks I was just kind of waiting to get through I saw all the crowd of people <laughs> and I wanted to talk to you how do I get in your app and so that was it and then I shared the story about uh, the following weekend my unbounced page notification just blew up and I was telling Sam something's going on, so I did emailed a couple of people to say, where did you hear about us? And it was a story that a gentleman had wrote about us that he picked up on us, and the the consumer hunger for an app that in eight clicks puts you in an RV spot that matches your bus was overwhelming, and I actually did a... Uh, I think a, a social media post of that of just my computer screen and, and you can still see it. It just unbounce after unbounce I, of just people wanting early access. And one thing I would add, I think it, it is really kind of an eye opening point for us. It was really a validation point uh, because at, at that point we we're strictly on beta, right? No one could buy anything. It was strictly just the idea of solving this problem. When, when you actually presented. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so we had our booth and I think, um, you know, I mean, Actually, it was, we were seeing probably 500, I mean, this historically uh, pre-COVID, right, this this uh, this conference had 74,000 people. And, and there, there, throughout the entire week, I think there was, they said, we'll say roughly half or 40,000 people. And, and each day we had 500 people coming to our booth, actually putting in their email and, and signing up after a demo. I mean, we were literally just holding up our iPads at one point and just saying, look, you, you guys got to come in yeah. tight <laughs> and, and see what this is about. And oh, by the way, you can't even buy it, right? Um, you know, it's not even out yet, but right. this and, is what's going we're to come. We're and uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was an incredible experience. And then we were very fortunate to be picked up by a, a couple of, you know, talk about just network effect. I mean, most of our marketing has been completely organic. Wow. Um, and that's been through different YouTube channels. Obviously, we've been fortunate. Terry's been on uh, RV Miles podcast with Jason and Abby. Um, and, and really, it's just the receptive activity of this community that we've been a part of. And as an, as an entrepreneur, you're like, are people actually interested in this? Like, I know yeah. we are interested, but that was the true validation point when we went to the conference and actually we're demoing it for folks and showing exactly what it could be um, and having a, a, a tremendous amount of success doing so. And they were, like I said, literally reaching for their wallet to join a membership club. Is this a membership they're, club? They're, they're join to now. <laughs> and, and I was like, wow, you know, this is... Yeah. And well, look, free, I'm excited. I'm excited for y'all because uh, I know uh, from my RV and experience that um, that is something that's going to be, um, you know, I'm going to value significantly, and, and I know a lot of other people will. So um, you mentioned beta testing, and I was curious um, what that actually, how does that work? What, how does that work for an app? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's an interesting process. And we actually, uh, you know, our, our, our team, I should say, our, our technology team with, with Mike Prone and Joel Garcia, uh, you know, have done this before with us within community and, and, and marketplace, um, you know, applications, but also softwares before. And the, the, the beta process was something new to Terry and I. Uh, but uh, when we talk about specifically the beta process, it's actually just uh, keeping it behind closed doors and trying to scale it at an appropriate manner of saying, hey, can we have five people on the app? Can we have 10 people on that? 
okay, now what if we get a hundred people, right? And it's all these different little milestones that you're, you're saying, okay, is it going to crash? Is it going to crash? Right. And these are, yeah. these are your people that, uh, you know, are, 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 you know, friends and family and, and people. And you're like, oh gosh, like I hope it works for them. Yeah. And so there were so many different iterations. And I think quite frankly, honestly, we failed in our first attempt uh, to put it out because we built an application of what it would be. Right. And I think we didn't necessarily have the foresight at the at this point to say, okay, we need to actually show what the experience will be. And we kind of built the product of what it will be in six months, right, with the level of inventory and campgrounds. And so that was, you know, a tremendous amount of feedback opportunity for us within beta groups. And slowly that started to say, okay, we started at five, 10, 100, 1,000. Okay, now we just went to the RV show and there's over 7,000 people that signed up for it. Okay. Uh, can, you know, we only have iOS. Uh, okay. Half of these people are on Android, right? So it's all trying to put together these resources, uh, you know, in the most efficient way, because we have zero uh, opportunity to miss that. Um, and so, you know, going through that process, I think we, you know, at the, at the storyboard, we said, okay, we're going to tackle the hardest problem first and, and hardest typically in the app world is, is iOS and making sure that you can get approval and then and uh, review um, and the different applications. And, and quite frankly, that's been a, a learning process for our entire team because there is a level of fidelity that we have to have, uh, i.e. individuals in your RV to share that with the campground, right? And so there's different, uh, you know, different processes that you have to work with to meet the mandates of, of Apple. And then, uh, you know, going into Android, there's, uh, you know, I would say just a little bit easier uh, to get through on, on Android, but... Um, you know, those, those beta processes, I think would probably be, uh, one of the most exciting, but stressful times because yeah. <laughs> uh, you just don't know if it's going to work. How close and, and are you on, on the Android version? So Android is already out. Um, yeah. So we, we put, uh, we put that together maybe two months ago. I mean, and, and to keep this all in perspective, we launched in March, right? Right. Uh, we've got just shy of 13,000 people on the application. Fantastic. Um, you know, and that continues to grow every single day. Um, and we're super humbled by how many people, you know, are, are utilizing the application and, and we kind of, kind of take a step back and say, okay, this is pretty neat. Uh, you know, that's something that you put together is, is, is being consumed at a pretty quick rate, um, you know, relative to, to other applications there. I okay. One of the, one of the neat parts that Sam talked about there and the users there is that we, as we, uh, employ tools to really look deep in is the users sign up, they look, they book and they're done. It's a rapid fire sequence. That's fantastic. Look, yeah. book, and go. Yeah, that's cool. Look, as we begin to wrap up here, I wanted to uh, ask about the family dynamics, father, son-in-law working together. Has, uh, what advice would you give to any other entrepreneurial father-in-law, uh, <laughs> son teams, and in going into business together? The son-in-law will start and share the real insights. Um <laughs> No, it, it's actually been fantastic working with them. I don't think there could be a better dynamic, uh, at least between Terry and I, on understanding each other's swimming lanes. I think it's very clear. We know when we're getting in each other's swimming lane. Yeah. Um, and I think that just comes from each one of our backgrounds. I mean, we're, we're, we're very different, uh, but in the same of how we approach a project or uh, deliver on a mission, right? Um, but it's pretty quick when he says, okay, I've addressed generals and you're going to do this. Right. So, <laughs> uh, you know, in the Pentagon, yeah, you know, so it's he, pretty, it, it's been a, it's been an interesting. And we uh, work process. remote, so we're not in the same office. So yeah. that, you know, but it's not just us, it's the whole family, right? So it's the whole dynamics of the family that really had to make the decision that we're in on this, mm -hmm. you know? So when you talk about that first funding, it was, it's us, right? It's coming out of our, we're writing the check and, 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 you know, my wife's calling him up on the side. You sure this is going to work? Oh yeah, this is going to work. And, you know, and I'm like, Hey, I'm in, you got to convince mother-in-law. Uh, you a know, lot of, a lot of pressure on the son-in-law side. Yeah, to really you know, provide. And, uh, think what he shared when I asked for his daughter's hand in marriage, it was, can you afford her? And, and, you know, now I'm telling us to invest in a particular business that I, I really can't say if it's going to work or not at that point in time, we know yeah. it's going to work now, but um, it's, uh, it's been a, it's been a great, a great, well, it uh, seems great journey. Y'all have a great chemistry and, and I sense, uh, your answers would be as, as they were, but, um, look, I'm super excited about, uh, the potential. I'm, I'm curious when you, when I think of that word potential, how, how would you define the potential for spot tonight? I would say unlimited. 
because I'm an out-of-the-box thinker. I had a, a boss in the Pentagon say, he's not only out of the box, he's never seen the walls of the box. Because I will come up with ideas, but I need people to help me bring that to fruition, and this is the first opportunity that I feel like we've really um, had a great match here. Because, yeah. you know, and that's what my wife said. She said, if this is it, if you feel that confident, Sam's the one that's going to make it happen. Let's go for yeah. it. Good deal. So, okay, so when you look at uh, your vision uh, for two years out or five years out, is that something that's definable for your business right now, or is it not like that at all? <laughs> it's a, that's an interesting question. So it is definable, but to the extent that you start to look at numbers that just don't make sense anymore. Um, and that's where we kind of often find ourselves of saying, okay, what are, what are the milestones? What are the goals? Right. And, uh, you just talked about the opportunity Terry kind of touched on it on, on kind of the unlimited capacity of what it could be. Um, you know, but, but for us, I think really just the core mission is, is to being able to show all 6,000 private campgrounds. And then, you know, we're already starting the sequence on the state side, which is very similar. Right. And I think going back to, we want to be able to show every spot in every campground across the United States and potentially in Canada and potentially in Australia as well. And so when we think about the opportunity there, it just starts to expand exponentially. Yeah. Um, but I think when we define success, it would be able to show all the individual spots to a person in Louisiana, a person in Oregon, a person in Maine, trying to have a wonderful trip with their family, right? And, you know, yes, at the end of the day, it's all about transactions. It's all about um, how long the stay is, right? Um, and the different milestones that you have to hit to have a successful business to get to year two, to get to year five. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, I, I think what we're finding in, in this industry is that uh, we are solving the, the hardest problem first. And that's certainly being rewarded um, with being able to, you know, have the partnerships that we have in place and some of the partnerships that we'll, we'll be announcing here soon. So, yeah, it, you know, and I, I would just say, you know, a part of me talk about success. So, you know, I look at it as a success right now because I know how hard we work or time RV owner to find a spot and I can pull the phone. There's sometimes when I'm just sitting there waiting somewhere and I'm just searching at parks and I'm like, Oh yeah, there's spots all over. Look at this. You know, they're right there because we know it. So, so for, you know, for me, it's like, so we're way past the proof of concept. We right. have made competitors partners in the app, right? Competing campground systems are coming to us and talking to us in the app and, and we're working that way. So it's, it, to me, it's, it's a huge success. And, and then really, uh, like we said on the out years, we, we have a clear vision. Sam has, uh, has been very, very methodical in our step and our plan. And I talked about persistence earlier, you know, that's how we keep persistence. And, and, and I would say we have multiple arms in the fire so that if something over here has a setback, this one over here, comes around and succeeds and so it gives us the satisfaction that wow look we got seven parks today even though this one had a hiccup on a connection but we have seven over here that are coming in and oh gosh look here's a great reservation coming through you know and uh it, it hit the cap you know and it's just it's that excitement yeah well look i'm excited for you guys mm -hmm. I, I i couldn't be more excited i mean it's uh uh something that i can see is just like absolutely gonna work and already it's working, but work on a, a grand scale. So congratulations to uh, the ingenuity and the creativity and entrepreneurial drive to uh, take an idea and bring it to uh, fruition. And uh, so happy and pleased for you guys. So thank you much for coming in and uh, we'll be watching your success. Thank awesome. you very Thanks, much. Andrew. Hey, I really enjoyed talking with Sam and Terry. You know, as an RVer, I have experienced those pain points that they referred to in booking a spot uh, over the last couple of decades. And I'm super excited about using this app. Uh, I think it's so cool that they made a business out of a need that they discovered through their hobby. I'm excited that it's a Louisiana startup because this one's going to the top. Uh, check out their app. Uh, spot tonight spot number two n-i-t-e um, and we appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you next time we would like to thank our title sponsor b1 bank that can be found online at b1bank.com 
The Next Entrepreneur is produced by Propel Productions. You can find more information at propelyourstory.com. Don't forget to subscribe to the Next Entrepreneur podcast and hit the bell for notifications. You can also follow us on social media. The links are in the description below.